Welcome to part three of the um, Troubleshooting Basic Single Area OSPF um, demo, uh, lab demonstration. Um, in part one, we did the basic setup. In part two, we did um, the uh, la basic layer three uh, troubleshooting uh, and, con and connectivity correction. We did find some errors. Um, there were some interfaces which were properly addressed but shut down. There were some interfaces which were only partially addressed. That is to say they had V4 or V6, but not both. Um, and we had some interfaces which had an address and a valid address, but not a valid address matching the other side of the segment. Um, remember, this is both for IPv4 and for IPv6. So you have to, it is not, it's not enough to um, find the problems with OSPF v2 and then go. If you only do that, you've only done part of the lab. You need to find OSPF, all the problems with OSPF v3 as well. So the first thing we're going to do uh, here in part three is a basic connectivity test. Um, if the routing protocols are working correctly, Every PC, um, that's 0, 1, and 2, technically A, B, and C. Um, I haven't bothered to um, rename them because that's not really uh, a major point. They should all be able to ping each other. Um, and more to the point, the paths they take should make sense. So I'm going to start by pinging. And if that doesn't work, I need to figure out why they're not pinging. Technically speaking, yeah, and we're only going to do this with IPv4. Now, as you go along, you may notice problems with IPv6 as well. If you've got this, if you're working through this with, say, um, a spiral notebook or a, or a piece of scratch paper, make a note of things that look dodgy about IP, about OSPF v3, but do not fix them yet. We will do those uh, in part four. Uh, when we specifically troubleshoot OSPF v3. Um, one of the keys to troubleshooting is to proceed systematically, methodically. Um, there is a whole section, a whole chapter of CCNA4 on how to do this, a various different way, mental models you can use, depending on the nature of the symptoms that you have in front of you and the scope of the problem and whether or not it's something you've seen before and you have, a, you might have a sort of a good idea where you can begin. Um, the three basic, and this is kind of a preview, the three basic options are the top down, that is from the physical layer going up to the application layer. Uh, sorry, that's, that's, sorry, that's, that's bottom up. Bottom up from the physical layer working on up. Top down from the application layer working down to the physical until you can find the problem. Or if it is a problem you've seen before, or you have you have some kind of connectivity, you know you have some basic connectivity, say at, at layer um, one and two and three, but things aren't working in the application layer. If particularly if it's a problem you've seen before, uh, you might be able to do take to take our third option, which is we, what we call divide and conquer, uh, which is to say you you pick a layer of the model. You say, for example, you observe the, you, you take the, the problem description you have, the issues you have reported, uh, say the number of users who might be out or the nature of the, the outage, and you look at it and realize, wait a minute, I think it might be a problem at layer so-and-so. Say, for example, hmm, I can ping, but I can't get a web page. Maybe layer four? Um, or five, six, uh, well, if you can ping, but you can't get a web page, that might, I mean, that could be, uh, basically a connectivity thing starting up at, starting at, at the transport layer and moving on up. It could also be a firewall because firewalls start getting interesting, start work, basic firewalls lurk, work at layer three, slightly more, uh, that's really packet filters. Um more slightly more advanced ones work at layer three and layer four a little bit more advanced go layer four layer five um that is to say session layer gateways um and the really uh complicated ones work all the way up at the application layer so um what we're going to do is more or less take um 
Well, we're going to start kind of with a top-down approach. Ping, in this case, is an application. Um, yes, it is also a protocol. Um, well, technically speaking, really and truly, what the protocol we're using is ICMP, uh, which is kind of, as I've said before, a protocol stack within the protocol stack. Um, it, wor it, it works at layer three. It also kind of works as a transport at layer four, which is why you don't, we don't ever discuss uh, TCP and UDP ports uh, in relationship to ICMP uh, messages. Um, it is its own transport protocol. Um, and for our purposes here, because we're using the ping application, it is technically speaking, we're starting in the application layer. So we're going to start with some uh, some application layer uh, diagnostic work, and then for, essentially because our goal here is routing, uh, we're going to jump from the application layer down into the network layer, layer three. Um, so let's start with A to B. So A to B, um, A to C, B to C. Um, you actually, if okay, so, um, and so um, we, we need, we will need our um, this part of our sheet uh, right here. Um, we'll come back to this at part in part four. Um, actually, you know what? I am going to make this easy on myself. I'm going to highlight this right quick. Um, let's see. Let's make it orange. They make it yellow. Yeah. Make sure I can see that. Of course, if you really want to, uh, I did this last time, but you could always start with IP config. Um, so we're going to ping 192.168.2.3. Destination host unreachable. Mm, okay. So obviously, uh, the first ping fails. Uh, what I want to do, I want to try 3.3. Uh, okay. So PCA can't ping, doesn't know about uh, network 2.0 and network 3.0. Now, before we solve any more problems, let's check the other ones. So uh, let's go to B. Um, actually, so that, not programming, desktop. So ping 192.168.1.3. Destination host unreachable. Hmm. Uh, so this is not looking good for the home team. Let's see if anything can ping anything. Um, and it's possible the answer will be no. Uh, so this is okay. It would help if I spell that thing correctly. Blast it. Okay. 192.168.1.3. Okay, nothing can ping anything. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, at this point, because literally nothing, that not, because nothing can ping anything, because everything is timing out, because all the routers don't seem to have the routing and table entries that they need. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to ping these gateways. Actually, no, I don't need to ping the gateways because I'm getting a response from the gateways. So let's start with uh, PC1. So if literally nothing is working, if your, get, you, if your router, if your uh, hosts can ping their gateways and that's all, um, it, really, it really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, actually, before I say it doesn't matter, let me see what the instructions say to do. Okay. Okay. Verify. Okay, so that's layer 3 connectivity. Okay, we did that. Okay. Okay, let's start on router 1. Start with router 1, um, and then we're going to do go to 2, and then we're going to go to 3. So, uh, let's... Uh, simplest thing to do... Uh, make sure all your IP your areas are assigned. Um, now, before you do this, notice something. Uh, router 1 has an adjacency with router 2, but not with router 3. So obviously some part of this is breaking down. Um, though we are not going to try to... Now, this is where I say, uh, I, I reiterate, be methodical about this. 
you will not help yourself if you jump around. If you jump to lay to, to router two and then router three, just trying to fix problems that seem to pop up. Um, troubleshooting is not whack-a-mole. Um, troubleshooting, um, you need to focus your efforts on a single problem. Solve all of the problems in one place, then move on, then move on. This is just like a debugging code. Um, if you compile a program and you get a long list of syntax errors that say, hey, it's not working, do not try to solve them all. Fix the first syntax error. Because, well, for one thing, the first syntax error, the, all the other syntax error errors may not even be valid syntax errors. Because the first syntax error might confuse the compiler about how to compile the rest of the code. So you could solve all of it by solving that one problem. You have to be willing to, re to iterate across the problem space. Do things slowly and methodically so that you know you've solved the problems you think you're solving. So let's look at router one. Um, let's do um, show uh, IP protocols. Okay, so the gigabit interface is passive. I have no other gigabit interfaces, and that's okay. Um, notice, however, that, okay, it is, it is hearing from 13.1. The routing information source, its routing information source is itself. It is its own router ID. It's literally, it seems to be talking to, route, to, to router 2 as a matter of neighbor adjacency, but it's not exchanging information with it. We can also check this with the routing table. See, I have no OSPF routes. So why? Um, there are two sides of this coin. Uh, why is it not talking to route? Why is it? Why does it not have a J, an adjacency with router three? And why is it not actually ex exchanging information with router two? So, um, router ID is set correctly. Now that might also be a problem. Uh, yeah, uh, the router ID for 1.1.1 .1 is supposed to be, uh, for router 1 is supposed to be 1.1.1. .1. So let's fix that. Okay. So I have changed the router ID. I've cleared the process. That we, if we were watching this on router two, we would actually uh, drop watch this adjacency drop and reform. And there it goes. So that's one good thing. Um, I'm going to stop this for just a minute, and we'll continue. Um, I think actually, let me do show run pipe section router OSPF. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't do section router OSPF. I can't do begin router OSPF. So before I stop, let's look at this. Uh, 1.1 slash 20, uh, uh, 000 255 co corresponds to my slash 24. Um, dot 3 co corresponds to my 30. Dot 13 corresponds to my 30. And they are all in. Uh, area zero. So this now works, uh, looks good. So I think router one is okay. Or I'm gonna, uh, the next thing to do is to move on to router two and figure out why they're not talking to each other correctly. Um, we'll get to that in just a second.